May the blessed servant to you all. I'd like to welcome you from the comfort of your homes and say let's enjoy present truth. Our subject continues to be the sacrificial offering pointing to the Godhead. Why did God give us these sacrificial offerings from the word God? We saw it when we started on Sabbath. All the different types of sacrificial offerings. Each had a male representation and a female representation. And we saw that the males were pointing to Christ and the females were pointing to the, God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which is feminine, which we prove that there is a feminine being in heaven who is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost, who represents all females. And the males are represented by the Son of God and the Father. So there is both sexes in the Godhead. We proved through the sacrificial offering that there was a time when God wanted a female, a female God and a male God. A female animal, we saw it when they went into the Ark of Noah, and we saw it even in different types of offerings. Let's continue to visualize and see these sacrificial offerings. What were they standing for? Who, why was God using both sexes and specifying which sex to use for what? This is the reason we are studying these sacrificial offerings. Now, we saw the offering for the poor last time. The poor, when someone was poor, was not able to provide the lamb. We saw that that person was supposed to take two turtle doves. And why two? Because there's a male and a female. One was for the sin offering, the other was for the bent offering. So we saw the sin offering one was for the female dove. And then we had a male dove, which was for the bent offering, which represented Christ, who was going to die on the cross. We saw, now we are, want, to, want to see all different scenarios of these offerings, how what they were using, which sexes they were, they were selecting, this will prove that in the Godhead, there is both sexes, father, son, who are masculine, and mother and daughter who are feminine, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Ghost, they are feminine. So this is an advanced learning, brethren, which comes to us from the Holy Spirit, because she is in charge of education because God says uh, in John chapter 16, verse 12, he says, if I don't go, she won't come. And when the Holy Spirit comes, will lead you into all truth. So that's why we need that truth from the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost, who are now in charge of this last period of the earth history when we are waiting for the soon coming of Christ. Now, today, let's reiterate from Leviticus chapter uh, 5, verse 6, for the poor. Mm -hmm. We want to understand in verse 6 what happens there. Yeah? Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he shall bring mm -hmm. his trespass offering unto the Lord mm -hmm. for his sin, uh -huh. which he hath sinned. Right. A female from the flock. Right. So when somebody sinned and was poor, was supposed to also give a trespass offering. But let's hear in verse 7. Let's hear. Verse but 7. It, we have been told the sex of the animal that was being brought for that sin. Right? Let's hear verse 7. Uh -huh. Verse 7. Uh -huh. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, right? then he shall bring for his trespass, mm -hmm. which he hath committed, mm -hmm. two turtle doves, right? and, or two young pigeons, right? unto the Lord, right? one for sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. Obviously, now <clears throat> we know which one was for the sin offering. It was the female, female one for the sin offering, which represented the Holy Ghost, which never died on the cross. And the bent offering one, it was a he, it was a male dove, which stood for the body of Christ, which was going to be delivered on the cross to die on the cross. So you see the one for the bent offering pointed to Christ, and the one for the sin offering pointed to the Holy Ghost. 
Now let's hear more. Let's hear more. Verse eight. Mm -hmm. Verse eight. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And he shall bring them unto the priest, right. who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first, mm -hmm. and wring off his head from his neck, mm -hmm. but shall not divide it asunder. So you see, why? Because we saw these two are always together, the Holy Ghost and Christ. As we saw in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 26, that the Holy Ghost also maketh intercession. And also in verse 34 of that same chapter on Romans chapter 8, verse 34, the Christ himself also make an intercession. So we know in the Holy of Holies, there are two beings making intercession. One is Christ who is masculine and the other one is the Holy Ghost who is feminine. Why? Because the people are going to be saved are both sexes. Is it true? True. The male is going to be saved. And the female are going to be saved. So there should be two which represent the two groups of saints which are going to be saved, which is the male and the females. When they were there at creation, there were two. They say, let us, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, let us make men in our image, in the image of what? Of those who are creating, who were both sexes. Because what came out showed what was creating. What came out was male and female Adams, representing the creators who were also male and female. And that, that's why we, we, we find in Genesis chapter 5 that the name Adam implied for both of them. Oh, let's read it, Genesis chapter 5. The name Adam only meant male and female. It didn't it didn't point to male only, Adam. Adam was for both of them. That was their name, Adam. Genesis chapter 5, this one. Let's see. This one. Mm -hmm. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Right. In the day that God created man. Right. In the likeness of God made he him. Mm -hmm. Male and female created he them. Right. And blessed them mm -hmm. and called their name Adam. Do you see both names? Uh, both Female and male were called Adam in creation. That's why God comes and says, let's make men in our image, in the likeness of us. What was coming out? Two beings called Adam. When you said Adam, you meant the female. Also, you meant the masculine. This is the creation story, which was pointing to what was in the Godhead which was pointing to those persons who were creating. And those are the same persons who are in the Holy of Holies from 1844, making sure you and I get the seal. And the females will get the seal, the males will get the seal. Unless you say it's only males who are going to get the seal, but it's both. So the number 144,000, which will be sealed, is for both sexes. It is for male and female. So there is no creation which was useless. Both creation, male and female, were useful in front of God. So there's no way you can look down on another creation and think it was not created. Most people, they regard men better than females. Why? This is a past age which Christ came to die for on the cross to make sure both sexes are important. So here we, are, we have, let's go to the purification for 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 person who needed purification in Leviticus chapter 12, we saw that there was a purification for babies who are born. There were dedications. There was a purification period for the mother who had just delivered babies. But we want to see that creation, uh, I mean purification story. Start from verse 1. Let's, let's understand this purification. Yeah. Leviticus chapter 12, mm -hmm. verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived a seed, mm -hmm. and born a man-child, mm -hmm. then she shall be unclean seven days, mm -hmm. according to the days of separation, for her infirmity shall she be unclean. Mm -hmm. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised, mm -hmm. and she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. Mm -hmm. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary, 
until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. So when a woman <coughs> conceived seed and delivered a baby boy, the baby boy should be circumcised on the eighth day. And also, the woman remains unpurified until day 33 of the baby boy. So it means the baby boy is dedicated on day 33. Try that one. Try that one when you deliver the baby. And you see how your baby, the one you dedicate only 30, 33 days, if it is a male, dedicating to God, because it is per instruction on Leviticus chapter 12. This instruction was not nailed to the cross. The only thing that was nailed to the cross are the animals that they were supposed to bring. Instead now, when you go to the temple, we don't bring animals on the dedication day. We bring an offering to thank God. Are offerings also nailed to the cross? No, there you don't nail the, the, the offerings. But the animals were nailed to the cross which were put into the body of Christ. But what we bring is an offering to thank God for that baby. Only day 33, right? This is an instruction on Leviticus 12. No one deleted it in the Bible. It was not nailed to the cross. It was not removed. Don't remove things that the Bible does not remove. Right, let's hear the next, next sentence, yeah? Mm -hmm. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. But right. if she be a maid child, if it is a female, if it is a daughter that the, the mother delivered, what happens? Mm -hmm. Then right. she shall be unclean mm -hmm. two weeks mm -hmm. as in her separation. Right. And she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. Right. So three score, a score is 20. So if it is three score, it's 60 and three, three so, days. So in six, sorry. In so six in six days. days. Yeah. So I was wondering because... If it is a girl, the woman is un, you know, is purified for 66 days. So it means on day 66, the woman should bring that child to the temple for dedication. I see many, many churches dedicating anyhow, without even seeing that that law of dedication is from Le Leviticus chapter 12. That's where we find the dedication. Don't dedicate anyhow. You dedicate on the Correct debt. Unless somebody just came to the church with children who were not dedicated on those 33 days or 66 days, that's when you can dedicate and ask God to pardon for not dedicating on those prescribed days. Because it's God who gave those days. Those days were given by God. Right? So, on the 66th day, bring that daughter for for dedication in the temple. That's what happens. So don't dedicate anyhow and just say, oh, these laws are being neglected. And that's why we have children who just do what they want when they should be dedicated to God on the time they're supposed to be dedicated. Now, let's hear, let's hear verse 6. <laughs> verse 6. Mm. And when the days of her, purify, of her purifying are fulfilled, mm -hmm. For a son mm. or for a daughter, right? She shall bring a lamb mm -hmm. of the first year for a burnt offering, right? So you see, when it was a son now or boy daughter, there is an instruction to bring these sacrifices to a sacrificial offering to offer and thank God. So this was an offering to thank God for giving this baby. So on the they they were supposed to bring. A lamp of the first year for a burnt offering. So which lamp is this one? Which is for burnt offering? Now you know. You should be knowing. In school you know math, you know everything. And you know this is, the number is this and it equals this one. Geometry, you know, all that you know. But here, have been given by God. That the first thing we saw was the two turtle doves, female and male. The female was pointing to the sin offering. The male was pointing to the bent offering. So the bent offering one was pointing to Christ, who was going to die. Because if he's going to be bent, he's going to be killed. And then the sin offering was not killed. It was pointing to the Holy Spirit, to the Holy Ghost, who never was killed on the cross. So now when we read on and we see that this is an offering for bent offering, you should now be knowing it's a male 
animal. And if it is for seed offering, it's a female animal. Now you know. You should be knowing, knowledgeable. Right. Let's see, let's hear more. Verse eight. <coughs> uh, yeah, if you finish verse, the verse you are reading. No. Mm -hmm. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled, mm -hmm. for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamp of the first year mm -hmm. for a burnt offering. Right. And a young pigeon or a turtle dove mm -hmm. for a sin offering right. unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest. So you see <clears> now, <throat> the ones which were pointing to a sin offering, there should be two, actually, one for burnt offering, the other one for sin offering. Now you know the one for sin offering is feminine. The one for burnt offering is male. Now, verse 8, let's hear verse 8. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons. Why two? Why two? Because one should be representing the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And one should represent the body of Christ. And now we know it was one should be a bent offering, the other one should be a sin offering. Read, read on this here. Mm -hmm. The one for burnt offering, right. and the other for a sin offering. Right. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, mm -hmm. and she shall be clean. Right. This is how they cleansed. They cleansed somebody who was in, in, on a purification period. This is what we see. So let's go to another type of offering. So when in the Old Testament we knew where these left were killed, they were not only killed if for, if for for anything else except for sin offering and for vent offering. But we now know what type of animals were requested by the letter, Bible itself from the mouth of God. Now, let's go to the sacrificial offering for cleansing someone who is ill, like uh, somebody with the, the leprosy. That's the known, in their time, their, 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 their main disease was leprosy. But in our time, we know our main disease is COVID. Do you understand? So in their main, main uh, disease, which was leprosy, we want to see how they will, because there were no hospitals. Imagine, we could have seen one verse talking about hospitals. But the hospital was coming from God, from the way he prescribes how illnesses should be removed in that time. And in our time, we see him sending one, a fountain. We saw it in Zechariah chapter 13. Let's go. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2. He is, oh, we start from this one. Mm -hmm. In that day. Right. There shall be a fountain right. open to the house of David Listen and to, to the that. inhabitants of Jerusalem. Listen to that. Uh -huh. For sin and for uncleanness. You see, there is also a fountain in that day, in our day. He has opened also a fountain to represent the two beings in the Godhead, which is for sin and for uncleanness. There is a fountain which he has opened, which, are, which we saw that it is the daily which comes to purify us. What do we take in the daily? A third hour. What do we take? Bread and wine. What are they pointing to? The wine has got a composition of two things, which is one, the iron component, which is the wine, and also water. The water which is there combined with the, with the, with the, with the wine. One, the wine points to the blood of Christ. And also the water points to the Holy Ghost. That's why we saw these two streams gushing out of the right side of Christ when he was on the cross to represent the two persons, the Holy Ghost and Christ in the Godhead. So now in that day, Zechariah chapter 13 talks about a day. He now opened a fountain for sin, and uncleanness. But he says he opened to the house of David. He said, the house of David is, David was an Israelite. David was a Ten Commandment keeper. David was a feast keeper. So it is to those who keep the Ten Commandments and the feasts. He has opened that fountain. That's why you find those who are branches, who are in the house of David, taking bread and wine. Why? For sin and uncleanness. Sin is the committing of sin, breaking of the law. But what about uncleanness? Is the illnesses. 
and fitness is illnesses. He has opened a, a fountain for sin and diseases. This, is it? That's uncleanness. Uncleanness is this. Now we see someone with leprous in his time was proclaimed as unclean. That is the fountain now. What was it in the Old Testament that they were using when there was a illness? Listen to that. In Leviticus chapter 14, read it from verse 1. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, So there's somebody who has, <coughs> who has seen, I mean, who has illnesses in that time in the Old Testament. So God comes in with his hospital. That's his cleanliness. He's going to clean somebody with leprosy, which was a deadly disease. He's going to clean that person to be whole again and healthy. Listen to how this person was being healed. So that we can see now why he's opening a fountain in our time for sin and uncleanness with the two emblems pointing to the male and fem female genders in the body. Do you understand? Now let's see how were these methods used by God in the Old Testament pointing also to the male and female Godhead in the Godhead, Fe feminine and masculine beings in the Godhead. Now let's hear more. Uh -huh. And the Lord uh -huh. spake unto Moses, saying, right. This shall be the law of the leper uh -huh. in the day of his cleansing. Right. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall look and behold, mm -hmm. if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. shall the priest command mm -hmm. to take for him that is to be cleansed mm -hmm. two beds alive. Right. So that person comes, is ill, and the priest confirms it's leprosy. And the person is supposed now to take two turtle doves. Why two? To point to the Godhead. Male and female persons in God. Otherwise, that's why we find the expression says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without that, there is no remission. There is no ill, there is no cure for the leprosy. The leprosy needed that specified turtle doves. Not that they were going to go into the system physiological and start healing the turtle. No, it was a mystery. That God is going to heal this person because the two emblems rep representing God in heaven, the deity, the Godhead, with male and female, is represented in the emblem of the turtle doves. Now we have the emblem of the bread and wine, which points also to the two genders in the Godhead. And we have illnesses also. That's why it is, that's why we will hear people saying, we take the daily. Take the body come here. And you have seen people who are ill in the hospital asking for the priest to come and have holy communion. Why? Those emblems are representing the two members of the Godhead who are in charge of healing, of healing those emblems. But, but if the emblems are not pointing to those two, if there is no healing. If there were no turtle doves, do you think this leper was going to be healed? Now let's hear more. Let's hear more. Go up to verse 7. Yeah. Then shall the priest command to mm -hmm. take for him that is to be cleansed mm -hmm. two birds alive and clean, mm -hmm. and cedar wood, mm -hmm. and scarlet, mm -hmm. and hyssop. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed mm -hmm. in an earthen vessel over running water. Mm -hmm. As for the living bird, so we shall one, take it. Which one should, the, should die? The one which was pointing to Christ should die. The male. Why one should die and one should not die? The other one was pointing to the Holy Ghost, who, will, who did not die on the cross, which was for sin offering. The one for bed offering should die, pointing to Christ, because Christ was going to die on the cross. So we have also these two emblems, the bread and wine. The wine has got these two compositions, the water representing the Godhead, the, and the Holy Spirit, and also the wine representing the blood of Christ. So these two emblems should be there. If you have any malady which needed healing, these two should be there taken so that you receive the healing component of how God has prescribed how we should be healed. Now let's hear more. Mm -hmm. 
As for the living bird, mm -hmm. he shall take it, mm -hmm. and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, mm -hmm. and the hyssop, mm -hmm. and shall dip them mm -hmm. in the living bird, right. in the blood of the bird that was killed over running water. Right. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed mm -hmm. from the leprosy seven times. Right. And shall so, pronounce him clean. So that <laughs> living bird, which was not killed, will be taken. There is a running stream of water. Taken together with the cedar, with this, whatever scarlet, as we are reading, dip that bed in the in the blood of the bed which was killed. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what happened? Listen to that. Mm -hmm. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from mm -hmm. the leprosy mm -hmm. seven times. Right. And he shall pronounce him clean. Right. And shall let the living bed loose into the open field. We see like it was with Noah. The living bird came with a branch, and after that, when the living bird went, nobody saw the, the living bird anymore, was representing the Holy Ghost. So the, the living bird, which was li uh, representing the Holy Ghost, will spray, will be used to dip, the, it will be dipped in the blood and spray on top of, sprinkle on top of the person who is ill. And automatically, the person was healed. So do you see how it was in the, in the Old Testament? There were emblems pointing to these two. Christ represent, was represented by the male turtle dove and also the female turtle dove representing the Holy Ghost. And this is how they were represented so to make the person heal. So to, who do you think healed this leprosy? Is it the bed? Is it this, the, the, the hyssop or whatever? What do you think healed this, this bed? I mean, this, this person who was ill. Obviously, it's Christ himself and the Holy Ghost. They came in and make, made sure the person was whole again. That's how they were represented in the Old Testament, by these two, two beds. But in the New Testament, we are hearing that he now opened a fountain for sin also and uncleanness. So the fountain... For sin, we know the Holy Ghost says without the remission of sin, we will never be healed. And also, for uncleanness, we know that the emblem which points to the blood of Christ, which is the wine, pointing to the blood of Christ, and the emblem pointing to the Holy Ghost, when they are represented, we get the healing. You see the mystery behind it. It's still that mystery which was in the Old Testament, but which was being used where they were using the animals. Now, in our time, what took the place of the animals is the bread and wine. Mm -hmm. These two still stand in our time to heal the leprosy of our time. Which leprosy of our time? We have a lot of diseases in our time. Which ones? Several, malaria, whatever, whooping cough, Ebola, COVID, all all the diseases that we find, because we know in, in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1, God is saying, in that day, you will open a fountain for sin and uncleanness. But the fountain is open to the house of David. Read, read, read that, that verse, Zechariah chapter, chapter 13. It's not to, the fountain is not open to anyone mm -hmm. except the house. Listen to that. In verse 1. Mm -hmm. In that day, Mm -hmm. There shall be a fountain open to the house of David mm -hmm. and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Right. So when you go to Israel, you find the, 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 the place where David was, was ruling. He had his household. These were the ruling part. These were the ruling part, a house. And also all those who were staying outside, in, even in Jerusalem, they were called the inhabitants of, of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So those people, who were they representing? They were representing those who kept the Ten Commandments and also who kept the feasts, the statutes, as it was with David in that time. So God opens a fountain. Which fountain? The daily. That's where you find the branches called the daily. Because the fountain has been opened for sin and uncleanness to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They are enjoying that in that day. Why? In this day now, we don't, don't only have leprosy. We have a lot of diseases more than they had there. So God made sure that in our time, we, it does not see, leave us hanging anyway, but hanging on these emblems. 
as people who are religious, as Christians, we need the emblems to also wipe away all these illnesses that come into our lives. So we need that. We should do our part as well. Yeah, science has done its part. We also do our part to make sure both parties are working towards our welfare. So here, yeah, let's hear, verse 10, verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And, and on the eighth day, right. he shall take two he lamps without blemish, right. and one ewe lamp of the first year without blemish. Why take two? One is a he, and the other one is a she. Why take both sexes to represent the Godhead? Male and female is found in Godhead. That's why Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, If you want to see what is in the Godhead, go to what was created. Now we also go to what God is instructing them to use for their daily use. They are using male and female animals, which are also pointing to the Godhead, to the genders in the Godhead. Now let's, let's go to, to uh, uh, verse 21. We want to see an alternative sacrificial uh, offerings for the poor or for the cleansing of the left. Because there is alternative. Why do I say alternative? It's, some cannot afford the lamp. The ewe lamp and the male one, they can't afford. Some can't afford what God is, is, is told them to, to bring. So what is alternative? Let's hear verse 21. Mm -hmm. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And if he be poor right. and cannot get so much, mm -hmm. then he shall take one lamp for a trespass offering right. to be waived. Mm -hmm. to make an atonement for him, mm -hmm. and one-tenth deal of fine flour mingled with oil mm -hmm. for a meat offering and a log of oil, mm -hmm. and two turtle doves mm -hmm. or two young pigeons, mm -hmm. such as he is able to get, mm -hmm. and the one shall be a sin offering and the other a bed offering. Right. And he shall bring them on the eighth day mm -hmm. for his cleansing to the priest mm -hmm. unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall take the lamp for the trespass offering and a log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. I like it when it says, when he's poor, he's got only one lamp, and next was told also to to take, a, to make an atonement, to make an atonement for him, and one tenth deal of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, and a log of oil. Do you see there is mm. oil? and also flour, which makes bread. So if there is bread and wine, these were two, when you were poor, they went with these two to represent the oil, represent the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and the flour, the bread, represent the flesh of Christ who died on the cross. That's why we continue to have our Lord's Supper with the bread and wine, to represent the two in heaven. If you have no two emblems in your life. That's why he says, you take the daily wine, you take it the third hour, and take it also a ninth hour. Same emblems, bread and wine. A ninth hour, same emblems, bread and wine. So your life is full of these emblems pointing to the Godhead. This is what God has opened in Zechariah chapter 13, a fountain to the house of David for sin and offering, for sin and Cleansing, right? Um, let's go. Have you finished? Go to uh, verse 30 and 31. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> verse 30. Yeah. And he shall offer the one of the turtle doves mm -hmm. or of the young pigeons, mm -hmm. such as he can get. Right. Even as such as he is able to get, uh -huh. the one for a sin offering. Right. And the other for a burnt offering. Right. With the meat offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him. Now the meat cleansed. offering, the meat offering, what is it? The meat offering is the bread. That's the meat offering. And the drink offering is the wine. So the the, the, the bread offering, the meat offering, now you understand those terms. If it is a meat offering, it is bread. And if it is a drink offering, it is wine. So verse 32. Uh -huh. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. This is the law of him mm -hmm. in whom is the plug of leprosy, mm -hmm. whose hand is not able to get which pertaineth to his cleansing. Right. So this is how he was treating the disease of leprosy. And in the Old Testament time, the disease which was most common was leprosy. And this is how God will treat that disease. 
What about these days? What about in the time before he come? When he points to say, I will still open a fountain to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Those who will keep the Ten Commandments, those who will keep the, 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 the festivals as they were before they were eradicated by the men of sin, those will have a fountain opened to them of the daily. He will open the daily, which has the emblems pointing to the Godhead, to Christ and the Holy Ghost. And they will enjoy a good life. He said of waiting, they will enjoy a good life. He, they will be healed like the leper which was healed. And God says it in the Bible. It's a black and white thing which has been written by God for us to be blessed. Now let's see, someone will say, um, okay, where the person, you remember when he says where the person with leprosy was living, the house also is, 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 is not clean. It needs to be purified. Let's see how then they will purify the house where the person with Lepha was living. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 14, verse 49. Verse 49. 15, 52 to 54. Right. Let's verse, see. Verse 49. How are they going now to this Because you have seen, uh, when COVID started, we were being educated scientifically to disinfect the place where the person with COVID had. We had to spray anti antiseptics everywhere and you know wipes you know wipes to disinfect the area to make sure everywhere per adventure somebody touched here and there so we will disinfect until today when somebody has COVID disinfect the area where you might find this COVID or any other disease disinfect they were also doing that in the Bible how will they disinfect the place where the person with lepros was living in, in case somebody walks in and catches it. It was highly infectious. Let's see how they were doing that. Leviticus 14, verse 49. Let's hear that. Verse 49. Mm -hmm. And he shall take mm. to cleanse the house. Right. Two beds. Listen to how they were cleansing that house. Two beds again. And cedarwood. Right. And scarlet and hyssop. Why two? One pointing to the Holy Ghost, the other pointing to Christ. Those emblems should always be represented. They will go and cleanse that place, making sure God instructed them so that this... Because if after the cross now, you take the bed and say, I'm cleansing my house, the house won't be cleansed. You need also things that pertain to our time, which is the daily, the bread and wine, to represent the, the Godhead. So in that in this in this time we can't clean our house with the beds, but in that time they were cleaning, cleansing the house with beds. But let's hear more. Let's hear more. This is it's not nothing to do with signs. This one. This is the signs, the heavenly signs of cleaning, what they were doing in the Old Testament. Listen, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he shall kill mm -hmm. the one of the beds in right. an earthen vessel over running water. This is. Uh -huh. And he shall take the cedar wood mm -hmm. and the hyssop and the scarlet right. and the living bird and mm -hmm. dip him in the blood of the slain bird mm -hmm. and in the running water and sprinkle the house seven times. So the blood should be there and the running water should be there. The water pointing to the Holy Ghost and the blood pointing to Christ. Both will be there. The same manner it, it was done when they were cleansing the men with leper. The same, same the beds Two beds should be taken also to cleanse the house and also the cedar, the hyssop, the running water and the blood. The bed has to die. The one which was pointing to Christ had to die. But the one pointing to the Holy Ghost has to live. But the one pointing to the to, to Holy Ghost is the one going to be dipped in that blood to make sure they sprinkle everywhere. Listen to that. Yeah? And he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the slain, of the right. bed slain, mm -hmm. and with the running water, mm -hmm. and with the living bed, and mm -hmm. with the cedar wood, and with his soap and with scarlet. Right. But he mm -hmm. shall let go of the living bed mm -hmm. out of the city into the open fields, mm -hmm. and make an atonement for the house, mm -hmm. and it shall be clean. Right. This is the law for all manner of plague of leprosy and scroll. And scroll. Right. This is how they were treating the place where the leper was staying. And also, 
his illness, they made sure these two beds were there and all the ingredients that are being used. But if you, someone would just take one bed and say, ah, I only want one which represents Christ, there was no cleansing. There was no cleansing. And if somebody says, I have seen somebody say, uh, why should we put water in the, in the wine when we are taking communion? You need to take the water because the water should be there to represent the Holy Ghost. And the, the wine should be there to represent the blood of Christ. You need to take these both emblems together. Why? Because they should represent what was there, what is there in the deity, in the Godhead. It is one, a feminine gender, which is the Holy Spirit, who never died. The Holy Ghost, who never died. And the, the masculine gender of the dove, which represented Christ, who died. Both should be involved in the cleansing of the house and also in the cleansing of the illness, right? Let's see the, sac the, the sacrificial offerings for cleansing uh, of unclean issues because we, we knew that there are issues that are unclean. What are these unclean issues? You've got general flu, anything running, anything running, running nose, nothing, or anything that you have which is an issue which makes a fluid out a running issue, it's called running issue. How, that's the only ordinary diseases that we know which are not the one that we are dreading these days. There are some other diseases. What should clean these diseases? Let's see now in verse in Leviticus chapter 15, verse 13 up to 15. I want to see then how were they treating these other running issues or unclean running issues because when somebody has got a flu, which is not COVID, it's a running issue already. When you have any illness, next thing we see, you have running issues. Running issues, all these things, they secrete secretions. Mm -hmm. This is all that God is saying. How then were they treated? Listen to that, Leviticus 15. So in other words, we are venturing into the hospital, heavenly hospital, how God was treating the old people the Old Testament people, and how he is treating the New Testament people religiously. Yeah, yeah, there's so much, there's so much being done scientifically. But let's also venture into it religiously. How was he treating these people? Now let's go to Leviticus 15, verse 13 to 15. Let's hear. Verse 13. Yeah. And when he that have an issue mm -hmm. is cleansed of his issue. Well, let's start before we want to see what these issues are or well, maybe you can start from this one let's go this okay. one mm -hmm. this one mm -hmm. and the lord spake unto moses and aaron saying mm -hmm. speak unto the children of israel and say unto them mm -hmm. when any man hath a running issue out of his flesh do you understand it's a running issue out, out of your flesh so that's general illness anyway anyway whether you have diarrhea whether we have what cough or sneezing or any running issue. How were they treated, these people? Let's hear more. <laughs> because of his issue, mm -hmm. he is unclean. He is unclean. Do you know that? That's why when you say, I've got diarrhea and vomit, they say 48 hours. <laughs> Go, 48 hours. Because they know you are unclean. Do you want to see? The Bible has it. The Bible has it. Because of that running issue, you are unclean. And if somebody says, I've got COVID, they tell you, Go and isolate for five days. They know you are unclean. That's biblical. You are unclean because of that issue. You are not clean. So deliberately going, putting yourself in, 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 near somebody is wrong biblical. It is wrong biblical. Now let's hear more. Uh -huh. And this shall be his uncleanliness mm -hmm. in his issue. Mm -hmm. Whether his flesh run with the his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue, mm -hmm. it is uncleanness. You are unclean. Every are, bed right? whereon he lieth, mm -hmm. that is the issue, mm -hmm. is unclean. When you are lying on the bed, you sweat. You do all sorts of things. Secretions go to the bed. Even your bed is unclean. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. And everything mm -hmm. whereon he sitteth mm -hmm. is unclean. Everywhere, even your chair. That's why they disinfect everywhere. They know there was an unclean somebody there. Right? Mm -hmm. 
and whosoever toucheth his bed mm -hmm. shall wash his clothes. When you go and see somebody who is unclean and also touch the bed, you are also unclean. Is it not? Right? That's why we should isolate. Right? Listen to that. Hmm? And shall even bath himself in water mm -hmm. and be unclean until the even. Go and bath. Because you are also unclean. You touch that bed. <laughs> And he that sitteth mm -hmm. on anything, mm -hmm. whereon he set on that at the issue, mm -hmm. he shall wash his clothes, mm -hmm. and bath himself in water, mm -hmm. and be unclean until the even. Right. And he that toucheth the flesh of him that at the issue, mm -hmm. shall wash his clothes. So that's why now you're greeting each other like this. <laughs> greeting like this. <laughs> why not like this as before? Because somebody who is ill is unclean. This is what is in the Bible. Listen to that. Mm-hmm. And he that toucheth the flesh of him that hath the issue mm -hmm. shall wash his clothes mm -hmm. and bath himself in water and shall be unclean until the even. Right. And if he that hath the issue spit upon him that yes. is clean. If in your saliva, that's why you put on a mask. Because if in your saliva is unclean. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. he shall wash his clothes mm -hmm. and bath himself in water mm -hmm. and be unclean until the even. Right. And what saddle, saddle, mm -hmm. So ever he rideth the pawn, mm -hmm. that is the issue, it shall be unclean. Even the car. You go in the car of somebody who is not, who is unclean, you take all of it. Right, please? Mm -hmm. And whosoever toucheth anything that was under him, mm -hmm. that shall be unclean until the even. Mm -hmm. And he that beareth any of those things shall wash his clothes mm -hmm. and bath himself in water and be unclean until the even. Right. And whosoever he toucheth, that he hath the issue, and hath not rinsed his hands in water. Mm -hmm. He shall wash his clothes mm -hmm. and bath himself in so water. So you tell me the Bible has got no health law. You say, let's, go, let's just go and be together and, and, be, and God is going to bless us. He will bless you when you do your part. N not when you don't do your part. You do your part. You open those windows. Don't keep those windows closed. Open them. Fresh air comes in. Go out. Exercise. Walk out. Also, claim the blessings of God from his oxygen, from the sun. Exercise, live a healthy life. That, then you can kneel down and claim the blessings of God of healing. He will heal you. Right? Let's hear more. Mm -hmm. And on the eighth day, right. he shall take to him two tetot. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, and now we're back to verse 18 now. Right. And when he has an issue... When he that hath an issue is cleansed mm -hmm. of his issue, mm -hmm. then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing, mm -hmm. and shall wash his clothes, mm -hmm. and bath his flesh in running water, mm -hmm. and he shall be clean. Mm -hmm. And on the eighth day, mm -hmm. he shall take to him mm -hmm. two turtle doves, two young pigeons, mm -hmm. and come before the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, mm -hmm. and give them unto the priest. So this is what they were doing before Christ died on the cross. This is how they were instructed to make sure they, they, they are clean, they are back to normal from these illnesses. Now, let's go up there. Have you, have you gone up to 15? 15. Mm -hmm. Let's go to verse 29. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. And on the eighth day mm -hmm. shall he take unto her two turtles mm -hmm. or two young pigeons and bring them unto the priest. Why two? Mm -hmm. Unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All right. And the priest shall offer one for a sin offering mm -hmm. and the other for a burnt offering. You see, there are two. One is pointing to Christ as the burnt offering. The one for sin offering is pointing to the Holy Ghost. And what, what happened? Mm -hmm. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering mm -hmm. and the other for a burnt offering. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord mm -hmm. for the issue of her uncleanness. Right. So you see, always, wherever, whether it was illness, whether it was for sin, whether it was anything, God instructed those two emblems to be represented all the time. That's why he wants those emblems in our time every day. Someone was asking me, is it okay at third hour, ninth hour, so I can just pray without taking bread and wine? You need the emblems. Same as those who were in the Old Testament. They needed the two turtle doves. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they were not going to be healed. 
Here you need the emblems. They are there, the third hour and at the ninth hour. When you go lazily like that and pray to God without those two, you won't act. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So the bread and wine should always be there, third hour, ninth hour. That's why you go everywhere where they are taking communion. It's twice a day. And now God has opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. So you will find that we now have had it because it's opened. A fountain has been opened to the house of David. Those who are keeping Ten Commandments and the festival. There are some who are keeping Ten Commandments and not keeping the festivals. They don't have him in that fountain. Hmm. They need to catch on to that fountain and keep both and have the fountain opened to them as well. Now, listen to that. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 16. Want to see what animals were instructed by God on the day of atonement. We know the day of atonement is the uh, tenth day of the seventh month, which is a day of atonement where every, every name is checked in the Holy of Holies by Christ and the Holy Ghost. We want to see what offering was demanded on that day. Let's go to verse 3. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Maybe start verse 1, right? Verse mm -hmm. 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of mm -hmm. the two sons of Aaron, mm -hmm. when they offered before the Lord mm -hmm. and died. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Speak unto Aaron thy brother, mm -hmm. that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil, mm -hmm. before the mercy seat, mm -hmm. which is upon the ark, that he die not. Mm -hmm. For That's I will good. appear in the cloud right. upon the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place mm -hmm. with a young bullock for a sin offering mm -hmm. and a ram for a burnt offering. So he went with one, a young bullock for sin offering. So you know what type, what gender that bullock was. If it's a sin offering, it was a feminine. And a ram for a burnt offering. Two of them. Now, verse 5, let's hear. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel, two kids of the gods, mm -hmm. for a sin offering, mm -hmm. and one ram for a burnt offering. Right. You see, always there should be those two representing the burnt offering and the sin offering. They should always be there to represent the male and female in the Godhead. That's why we proclaim to say there is a feminine in heaven is the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. They are feminine. It's not only a, a family of males there. It is both sexes are there. God the Father is male and God the Son is male and also the Holy Spirit is female and also the Holy Ghost is female. So it's those who need intelligence who will grasp that and understand it without bias or prejudice. Now, let's go to verse 8, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And he shall take the two gods mm -hmm. and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 9. And Aaron shall bring the god upon mm -hmm. which the Lord's, the Lord's lot fell, mm -hmm. and offer him for a sin offering. Mm -hmm. Like verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. But the god on which the Lord fell, mm -hmm. to be the scapegoat, mm -hmm. shall be presented alive before the Lord, mm -hmm. to make an atonement with him. With him. And to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Right. So you see, one would be a scapegoat on the day of the day of atonement, and was not killed, and to let to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness alive, a live offering. It was a live offering. Do you understand? Right. Not. Notes. There are two. Sin. There are two sin offerings. Mm -hmm. One dead and one alive. Right. So we saw two sin offering, and one is dead, and one is alive. alive. And now you know, you don't need to be hammered every verse to, to know which, which gender. You want God to continue to say, this one should be a female, that one should be a male. That one is a, a mind which does not want to reason, which needs all that. We have seen from the beginning that's where he's specifying it should be a female, this one. Now he's saying two of the gods, and Moses and Aaron, they now know which 
which one goes for the sinner offering, which one goes for the male offering, for the for the, for the great offering. Verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then, mm -hmm. okay, sorry. Right. Then shall he kill the God of the sin offering, right. that is for the people, mm -hmm. and bring his blood within the veil, right. and do with, the, with that blood mm -hmm. as he did with the blood of the bullock, and mm -hmm. spring it upon the mercy seat, and mm -hmm. before the mercy seat. Right. Verse 18. Verse 18. Yeah. And he shall go out, out of the most holy place, mm -hmm. unto the altar that is before the Lord, mm -hmm. and make an atonement for it, mm -hmm. and shall take of the blood of the bullock, and of the blood of the goat, mm -hmm. and put it upon the horns on the altar round about. Right. And verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place mm -hmm. and the tabernacle of the congregation mm -hmm. and the altar, mm -hmm. he shall bring the live God. Why bring the live God? One God which was representing the Holy Spirit, which has been left alive, will be brought back to the congregation. Why? It was representing the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, who will remain abiding in the congregation. Do you understand? Now, verse 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And Aaron mm -hmm. shall lay both his hands mm -hmm. upon the head of the life God mm -hmm. and confess over him mm -hmm. all the iniquities of the children of Israel. Why were the sins confessed over the life God? Because mm -hmm. there's one which died, but there's one alive. Why then were the, were the sins now taken to the top of this life God and all the sins were laid on top of this life God? That scapegoat. Why? Listen to that. Uh -huh. And Aaron mm -hmm. shall lay both his hands mm -hmm. upon the head of the life God mm -hmm. and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel mm -hmm. and all their trans transgressions and all their sins. Mm -hmm putting them upon the head of the life God mm -hmm. and shall send him away mm -hmm. by the hand of a fit man unto the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And the God shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. Mm -hmm. And he shall let go the God in the wilderness. That's what happened. It's gone. Right. Let's hear, let's hear what, what, what uh, uh, interpretation on, on behold thy mother the, the dead the dead God mm -hmm. did not make the final atonement. Right. So the, who, who made the atonement then? It's not the dead, dead God alone. Who did make the, de the atonement? The scapegoat. The, the scapegoat took all the sins and went into the wilderness. But the dead God, when the dead God died, represented Christ. But this life God, which was sent to the wilderness, took all the sins, so participated in making this at one moment of the congregation with God. That's the atonement. Made these people now go back to God. This is atonement. At one with God. But who took the sins? It is the life God. Do you get so that's why, that's why we hear that it says, the dead God did not make the final atonement. Who made the final? Listen to that one. Uh -huh. The dead God did not make the final atonement. Right. The Levitical law mm -hmm. shows a dead and mm -hmm. a life offering for sin and uncleanness. Right. Verse 21 mm -hmm. shows the final atonement is made in the holy place, mm -hmm. not in the most holy. Right. There are two sin offerings, one slain, one left alive. Mm -hmm. For a full statement, final separation of sin from the camp of Israel. Mm -hmm. As in the offering for uncleanness, mm -hmm. the law required one dead bird right. and one left alive right. to be let go in the field. Mm -hmm. These are symbols of two mediators. Mm -hmm. One who died, one ever living. Right. Christ and the Holy Spirit. Right. So these two were representing Christ and the Holy Spirit. So the dead God was representing Christ. The live God was representing the Holy Spirit. That's why it was let alone in the wilderness, took all the sins. So when we kneel and we are, we are confessing all our sins, in this we will find out what happens in the Holy of Holies. Right? Uh, verse 30, 34. Verse 34. Mm -hmm. 
and this shall be an everlasting statute unto you. So the day of atonement is a statute. So now you understand why God says he will bring Elijah in Malachi chapter 4 with the statutes and judgment. So you see these are the feasts. These are the, the, the restoration what God is saying to cleanse unto 2300 days. The sanctuary shall be cleansed. But here, let's hear and this shall be an everlasting statute. Listen to that. Unto you, mm -hmm. to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. Right? And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. It's an everlasting. That's why Christ, when he died on the cross, ascended to take up the role of this priest who was doing this on earth. He is the one doing it in heaven. But... Now we know he is not alone. He's got the Holy Ghost together with him. Because Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and verse 34 proclaims that there are two there making an intercession. Right. So this is what was being done by the priest on earth, taking two gods. And yet the reality in heaven is the two gods, which is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and also Christ making intercession who these two animals were representing. This is how the sins in the Old Testament time were removed. How the illnesses, the diseases were taken off. And this is in the New Testament. Christ ascended to be the high priest, the Holy Ghost working together with him making sure what was being done by these two gods they are the ones now doing that. But we'll come to that point. Let's, let's hear more. And this shall be an everlasting statute. So in our time, we don't have gods. We don't have um, turtle doves. But what we do have, we have the statute of the daily, the bread and wine, representing the two who are doing exactly the same thing which was being done on earth by the priest uh, giving the emblems of the two animals. The, now we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and Christ doing the same thing which was being done on earth by the priest. But let's, let's hear more. And this shall be an everlasting statute. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you, mm -hmm. to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. Mm -hmm. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. So you don't even keep the day, the day of atonement. But look at these two in the world of holies. They are interceding for you and me on the day of atonement. Like it was being done by the priest. Because the priest did build a tabernacle, which was a copy of what is in heaven. And what is in heaven? Christ ascended soon after his resurrected on Sunday. Went straight to start the day which was at the third hour. And came back same day to officiate. He went to officiate as a priest, as the priest was supposed to officiate at the third hour on earth. He went to do it, to start this ministry, which we are enjoying until today. And he says in that ministry, these two should always be represented by the emblems that we take, that the daily, which is the bread and wine, which we take at the third hour and ninth hour. We also take when at the Passover feast, we also take when at on Sabbath. We also take when on the Day of Atonement. We also take when on Feast of Tabariku. We also take when on Pentecost. We also take when on the new moon like today. These should always be there to represent the two Godhead, which are meditating for you and me in the Holy of Holies today on the new moon. How nice it is to understand the present truth, which has to do with our lives, making sure our present time is looked upon, is looked after by God, to make sure we are presentable as people who are getting the seal of immortality. How do we get that seal of immortality? By these two emblems. The two emblems, the daily, representing the two intercessors, they are stamping on us that we now know this truth that was promised that the Holy Ghost will come and lead us into all truth so that we are saved. Now, let's hear. 
Let's go to Leviticus chapter 1, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. 14, 1, 4. Mm. Mm -hmm. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 14. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if the burnt sacrifice for his sin offerings, and if the burnt sacrifice for his offering mm -hmm. to the Lord be of fowls, mm -hmm. then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves mm -hmm. or of young pigeons. Mm -hmm. So you see this animals are being you know given freely like that by god to make sure and you now know which one to take for what which one to take for what whatever episode it was on the old testament time you can finish the whole chapter one and you can also finish the whole chapter 14 you can even finish the chapter 16 now let's hear leviticus chapters 1 and 14 deal with listen to that leviticus chapters 1 and 14 deal with the offerings for uncleanness right but the scriptures Say for sin and uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Leviticus chapter 16 deals with the yearly sacrificial offerings for both typifying for both typifying the final atonement. Right. So we have seen we have seen when, when we went to Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1, and, and go back to that verse. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 13, verse mm -hmm. 1. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Right. In that day, mm -hmm. there shall be a fountain open to the house Which of Which day is that? The day when judgment begins in the house of God. That's the day Zachariah is talking about. In that day, listen to that. Shall the fountain mm -hmm. be open to the house of David mm -hmm. and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem mm -hmm. for sin and for uncleanness. Mm -hmm. And let's go to verse 9, right? Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And I'll bring the third part through the fire mm -hmm. and will refine them as silver is refined mm -hmm. and will try them as gold is tried. Mm -hmm. They shall call on my name mm -hmm. and I'll hear them mm -hmm. and I'll say, it is my people and they shall say, the Lord is our my God. Do you marvel why in that day when he opened the fountain to the house of David, he has a third which he has to bring. Not everyone in the house of David, not everyone in the church, in the Laodicean church. No, not every Ten Commandment keeper. But the house of David, which is one third, I will bring one third. Not everyone. The Bible clearly tells us that we are not all going to be sealed. That's why in Ezekiel 9 we see some are slaughtered, some are sealed. So not everyone gets that. But fortunate are you when you catch on to the fountain of the house of, of David. Because it's only one third that he promises that I will take the one third and bring them into fire. He will try and test everyone who profess to follow God and keep his Ten Commandments and keep his feasts and keep his statutes. He's going to bring them into fire. It's a third. It's not as much as those who are not going to get the seals. Those who are not going to get the seals are several. So if you see many people breaking with numbers, don't worry about that. Because there are several ones who will not get the seal. It's only confined to a few people, 144,000. So it might be the only one in your area. You might, there might be no, nobody in any areas. So God knows where the 144,000 are in the house of the Laodicean church. But it's not everyone. Because there are some people who get confused with numbers and think, oh, because we are few, so we are wrong. We are few, when we are only wrong when there are many. Don't you know that? In the Bible, you are only wrong when it is plenty of people on your side. You are, because it says the narrow road leads to life, but the broad one leads to destruction. It says so in Matthew chapter 7. So how dare you, you equate God's things with numbers? Numbers don't count when the sealing process is in progress because it's only a few. A third will be taken and tried in fire. God will really try those who are going to take the place of Lucifer, who left with one third of the angels in heaven, they should be tried. He does not want that occasion again. That incident which was caused by Satan will never be done again. Heaven is pure as it is now and excellent. Needs people who are pure who will inhabit heaven. So don't, don't worry about other people who are not even keeping the feast and telling you that they are ready to walk in the cloud to go to heaven. Some will never even raise up an inch above their, their feet. So don't worry about that. We need to start the present truth and see what is it that will make us fly. 
to heaven. We not just fly because we profess by mouth that we are we are we are Sabbath keepers. We are doing this and that with our mouth. We will profess by it's not only by faith, but it's both faith and works. They are the ones that will show who we are. He says you will know them by their fruit. It's the fruit that will tell you who is who. So we will know them. We will know them. Then don't leave all that to God to judge. God does not to judge some of the things that we can judge for, for ourselves. He says, hey, let, let God judge. What, what, what is it that you, you will see those who are going to be saved by their fruits. You will see those who are not going to be saved by their fruits. God says, by their fruit, you will know them. So here we have uh, Zachariah chapter 2. So let's, let's read. Uh, um, in that day, there shall be a fountain. We saw that in Zechariah chapter 13. Um, it is a fountain for the house of me. And almost go, go, go to Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews 7 now. I want to hear now in the New Testament. Does that affect us? This blood which was sprinkling everywhere where there was a illness combined with water and these two sin offerings, the, the one sin offering, one bent offering, does it apply? Now we're going to find it in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Yeah, I mean chapter 7. So chapter 9. You start with sub, chapter 7. You can read the whole chapter chapter 9. Go to chapter 9, 9 verse 22 to 24. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. All things. That's why Paul now starts in Hebrews. He says, <laughs> you are saying it was nailed to the cross. Almost everything. We saw that in the leper. In order for him to be restored back to health, it, the blood was supposed to be there. And also to cleanse his house. The blood was supposed to be there. The purification of the uh, woman we had just delivered was supposed to be paged by the blood. The blood was there. But here now in the New Testament, you can say, okay, now that was in the Old Testament. But listen to Paul in chapter 9, verse 22. Listen to that. Yeah? And, and almost, almost all things are right? by the law paged with blood. There is that law still in the New Testament of paging everything by the blood. And Isn't without that? the shedding of blood, there's no remission. When you have your worship, that's why God clearly tells you that. As the priest entered the morning and evening, yeah, in, in the PP, PP 353, in the morning and evening, these two times, the third hour and ninth hour, were upheld. Go to that one, Th PP 353. The, as the priest morning and evening was said, these two times were important in their time. And it says, they, with one accord, they worshipped God on that third hour, so that the daily is taken on that time. Read for me. Have you found it? Found it. Right, let's read. PP, mm -hmm. Pastors and Prophets, page 353. Right. Point three. Mm -hmm. As the priests, morning and evening, right. entered the holy place mm -hmm. at the time of incense, mm -hmm. The daily sacrifice was ready to be offered upon the altar in the court without. You see, they had to make sure that hour is so sacredly, is solemn in their life of the third hour, which is the, the daily sacrifice, which is which is the bread, where they were killing the lambs, but the bread and the wine was also going to be taken. Listen to what they were doing there. Uh -huh. This was a time of intense interest you to the worshippers. You hear that the third hour is a time of intense Interest. Interest to the worshippers, right? Who assembled at the tabernacle? Why was it a time of intense interest to the worshippers? It is now the time where they are taking the emblems which represent the two who meditate for us, who created us, who are there in the Godhead. Listen to that. Yeah? Before entering into the presence of God, before they approached the third hour, through the ministration of the priest, right, they were to engage in earnest searching of heart and you confession see, of sin. They did not just say, "Oh, it's the third hour. Let me, let me. I was just climbing the steps there. Let me stop it." No, no. They had to prepare for the third hour. Right? Listen to that. <laughs> they united in silent prayer. They united to make sure that hour finds them together with God. Uh -huh. 
with their faces toward the holy place. Mm -hmm. Thus, their petitions ascended with a cloud of incense. Right. While faith mm -hmm. laid hold upon the merits of the promised Savior, mm -hmm. prefigured by the atonic sacrifice. Right. The hours Listen pointed. To that. Listen to that. The hours pointed. Pointed for the morning and the evening sacrifice. The third hour and ninth hour. That's the morning and evening. Yeah. We regarded as sacred. These are sacred hours in our lives. Right. And they came to be observed mm -hmm. as the set time for worship mm -hmm. throughout the Jewish nation. Go ahead and check. These two hours are the ones that they get more, more alignment with God. Mm -hmm. And when in latter times in the Jews were times, scattered in as they captives, went to Babylon captivity, in distant lands, distant lands, they still at the appointed hour turned their faces hours, toward Jerusalem. On these two hours, they still maintain them wherever you are, whether you are in prison. Whether you are in, a, in, a, in whatever place you can, solitude, solitude place you are, those two hours should continue to be maintained. That's why you saw even David continued even in a dungeon of prison. He had those hours. Daniel, he had even in the den of lions. They did not touch him. He had those hours. You understand? Listen to that. Amen. Okay? They turned their faces toward Jerusalem right. and offered up their petitions to the God of Israel. Right. In this custom. In that very custom. Listen to that. We are Christians now. Listen. Mm. Christians have an example we for morning and evening prayer. We have an example there. This is how I'm talking to us in Patrick's and Prophets, page 353. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While God mm -hmm. condemns Listen. a mere round of ceremonies. That's why he opened the fountain to the house of David. To make sure we have those two hours. He condemns just coming together, doing this, uh, let's go this Sabbath school, and let's do this youth, let's go this, whatever, let's go to, this is time for divine, this is time for offering, this is time, without those two hours, he condemns such services. Listen to that. While God condemns mm -hmm. a mere round of ceremonies. Just a mere round of ceremonies. Without the spirit without of worship. Without these two hours. He looks with great pleasure. But he looks with great pleasure. Upon those who love him. Upon those who love him. Bowing morning and who, evening. Who bow to him third hour and ninth hour, taking these two emblems to represent the Godhead, to represent Christ and the Holy Ghost in the Holy of Holies. He looks with pleasure to that. But let me let why why would he put that scripture there? Because he knew in the end, you opened the house, a fountain to the house of David and the inhabitants. Those who are getting the sale, they have that. They will be saved under such conditions. They will have that every day of their life, third hour, ninth hour. Uh, how can you be less like that to do that? Go to churches who take communion. They take, they take it twice a day. Twice a day. Go every day of their life. How can you want a, a, a worship which is lazy, which you don't have these two hours? You have nothing to fear. Anything you have, you have those two hours to ask for help from God, and blessings from God for anything that befalls your way. You have. Why are you fearing those two hours? Those two hours are for you and me to live in the time where there's plenty of diseases. Where there's plenty of mishaps and plenty, whatever is happening. Look at whatever is happening. You are telling me Christ is about to come. But you are not in the house of David taking this fountain which God has poured for you to, sustain, to be sustained alive. Look at how people are perishing. Look at how, but he has opened that fountain. Look for the fountain. And do what the fountain, the fountain wants you to take the daily third hour and ninth hour to represent the two who are meditating for you. Then, until Christ comes, you will be safe and sound, home and sound, enjoying your life to the full, to the brim. Yeah, not living a life of vain, a life in vain. That even the day you die, people say, why were you alive? What did you achieve? We achieved one thing, salvation. Salvation is what we, let me tell you one thing. When he comes and when the trumpet, trumpet calls coming from heaven, the only thing you can break about and say, I got this. Is your salvation. Whatever you have been obtaining around, 
will be nothing that day. It will be nothing. Some people break about money in the banks. Some people break about fields, the farms, this and that. Some people break about degrees in the, you know, education and everything. All that is good. But when the trumpet sounds, the only thing you will break about is we have, we have made it. We have made it. We have made it. We will make it, brethren. We will make it. Keep the statutes. Keep this. Continue with these emblems which point to the two meditating for us, making sure we receive the seal and we are qualified to enter the pearly gates. We will make it. We will make it. Present truth will make sure we are in. We are in the pearly gates. Wait for God while you are doing what he has opened the fountain for. He opened the fountain for sin and uncleanness. For you and I to enter the pearly gates. He did open. If he didn't open the fountain. So what does that verse mean? What does that verse mean to you? What does it mean? Check what they were doing in the Old Testament. Without these two turtle doves, the leper was not healed. You will need those two. Check. Everywhere. Check. Now together, yes, Paul is telling us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Without, everything is paid by blood. Listen, listen, let's go back to it. Let's go back to it. Uh, 9 verse 22. I love this verse. Yeah. Hebrews 9 verse 22. Let's hear. Let's hear. Verse 22. Verse 22. Yeah. And almost all things yeah. are by the law paged with blood. Do you hear that? And without shedding of blood right? is no remission. You hear that? Without that blood, the leper was not going to be healed. Without that blood, the house which was being purified was not going to be pure. Without that blood, the emblem, the daily emblem has been opened for you and I. Without it, there is no remission of sin. Right? But let's hear more. <laughs> Up to 24. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. It was therefore necessary right? that the patterns of the things in the heavens right? should be purified with this. Right. Did you hear that? The patterns of the things in heaven should be purified with, with this. the blood. With the blood and the water. These were purifying the patterns of the things in heaven. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. But the heavenly things themselves mm -hmm. were better sacrifices than these. Mm -hmm. For Christ is right? not entered into the holy places made with hands. Right. Which are the figures of the true, mm -hmm. but into heaven itself. Right. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Right. He entered there to continue this work in heaven itself. He he is not like the priest who was in a tabernacle, but he is now in heaven itself to appear in front of God with these emblems. But listen to that. Let's go to get controversy and hear what Sister White says about the intercession which Christ is doing. With this blood. Let's go to a great controversy, page 416. Yeah? Page His 416. intercession. Yeah, it's there. Mm -hmm. His intercession is that mm -hmm. of a pierced and broken body, mm -hmm. of a spotless life, mm -hmm. the wounded hands, mm -hmm. the pierced side, mm -hmm. the marred feet, mm -hmm. plead for fallen man, mm -hmm. whose redemption was purchased at such an infinite cost. His intercession is that of a pierced, broken body. Do you understand? When he is in the hollow, hollow holies, he is like a pierced, broken body. The wounded hands are there. The pierced side, the mad feet, plead for fallen men whose redemption was purchased at such infinite cost. He was bruised for us. Now he is interceding for us. Let's hear from 417, the same book. 417, the cleansing, listen to, to the, uh, what he's doing in the world of holies. Uh -huh. The cleansing, the both cleansing. in the typical and in the real service, right? must, must be I... accomplished with blood. Right. The cleansing which was being done by the priest with the turtle doves and what, even in the New Testament, must be accomplished by the blood. But which blood are we using? Listen to that. 420, same, para, same, same book, great controversy. Uh -huh. For Such the, was the service performed. Such was the service performed by the priest on earth of the turtle doves and everything. It was performed by the priest on earth. Listen to that. Unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Why was the priest doing that with the blood of the bulls? He was typifying what is being done now by Christ 
by his own blood. The same man on the day of atonement, he was doing that using the bulls, the, the blood of the bulls. On the day of atonement, Christ uses his blood. On the Sabbath, he was killing the lambs and using the blood of the bulls. On the, on the Sabbath in heaven, in the New Testament, he uses the blood of Christ. Same thing. On the earthly sanctuary, he was using that on the Feast of Tabaliku as bedet in the Bible. And in the New Testament, same thing on the Feast of Tabaliku, he uses his own blood. Where there was the blood of the bull, he uses his own blood. That's why there is a need for you to keep the, same, the Feast of Tabaliku on the proper date because there is such things happening in heaven. That's why on the day of Pentecost, on the 50th day after Christ was crucified, he has gone back to heaven. The Feast of Pentecost, they were all gathered in Jerusalem. What was happening in heaven? He was presenting his own blood. That's why they were taking the blood, the, the communion wine. They finished the wine in Acts chapter 2, verse 12. It says, they are full of new wine. They had finished that wine at the time when Christ was offering his own blood. Do you understand? He still is offering his own blood. Where? When? On the time the priest was offering that blood. Passover. Sabbath. New moon. Tabernacle. Atonement. Pentecost. You tell me that those times were nailed to the cross? You are joking. Start joking. Start being serious. Because that's why the high priest is now following those times, as the priest was following those times, but he was doing that with the blood of the bulls. But the high priest in heaven is following those times, but not instead of the blood of the bulls, he is using his own blood. You tell me those times were nailed to the cross? I don't know what you are talking about. Now listen to that. Such was the service performed unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Right, read on this here. Mm -hmm. And what was done in type? What was done by the priest on, in type? This got caught on this page 420. What was being done on Tapaniku, on Passover, on New Moon, on Feast of the, on, on, on Lord Supper at, at even? What was being done by the priest on earth? Listen to that statement. And what was done in type right? in the ministration of the earthly sanctuary right? is done in, in reality, reality in the ministration of the heavenly sanctuary. You see, they still the same time on Sabbath. When you tell me that the, the animals were killed on Sabbath, and you are now telling me that that Sabbath is no longer there in heaven, then you have something wrong with your reasoning. If the Sabbath, is, where the animals were being killed by the priest on Sabbath, is still there. So, so be the day of atonement. So be the feast of Tabernacle. So be the Passover. So be the Pentecost and the new moon today. It's still there. We are gathered, brethren, today. Because in heaven, they are also gathered. But instead of the blood of the bulls at the third hour, we are having the bread and wine. Why is the high priest in heaven is offering his own blood? You understand? We are not lost. We are not lost. But it's only one third will be tried in fire. They will be shaken to make sure they stand and hold fast upon these times. This is what the devil is trying to do. Remove you from keeping these times so that you don't go along with the lamp in heaven. With us wherever he goeth, we are there. On Passover, we are together. On, on the new moon, we are together. On the Feast of Tabernacle, we are together. We are together on the Sabbath. We are together on the day of Pentecost. We are together. These are they who follow the Lamb with us wherever he goeth. We are there. Yeah, the soldiers of the cross. Let's march on, Christian. Let's march on, Christian soldiers. We are together with our, our maker, our savior, our master. You understand? I don't know where others are, but we know it's only one third which is going to be tried in fire. We have been told by Zechariah 13, verse 9, it's only one third will be tried in fire. Listen to that. I don't know whether you're going to drop down when you're being tried. Me, I will fight for my own salvation. I will, uh, I will be tried and I will still hold on. I will hold on. Tell yourself you will hold on. We will hold on, brethren. We will make it. We will make it with the times when our high priest, high priest is busy with these times in heaven. We should also be busy with them. 
like it was with the, the people in the Old Testament. They were busy, intense, intense interest on the third hour, intense interest on the ninth hour, intense, intense interest on the new moon, on the day of atonement, on the Passover, on the Purim, which is there on the 17th of March. The Purim will be there to make sure we are together with our Savior. You understand? We are together. And finish that one. What was done in time is still done in reality. You understand? In the heavenly sanctuary. Let's go to 421 there. So did. <laughs> so did Christ plead his blood before the Father in behalf of sinners. So you see, the blood is still there in the New Testament. He's pleading his own blood. Why did we see the blood there? It was there to make sure they are healed. To make sure the poor, the sin, uh, is the sin offering, their sins are pardoned. To make sure all the things, the purification is done, it was done. It is still there. The blood is still there. The blood of Christ instead of the bulls. The blood is still with us. We will continue, brethren. Nothing stopped. No time stopped. If the time of the Sabbath is still there, so the time of the new moon is still there. That's why in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 to 24, it says, In the new heaven and the new earth, the times will still be there. On one Sabbath, we will go and worship God. On one new moon, we will go to worship. From Sabbath to Sabbath, new moon to new moon. Those times were not near to the cross. They were still there. They're still there. The new heaven and new earth. I don't know who is, who is rushing to, to, to block them and it brought them to the cross. It's these ones who are in the other two thirds, which we didn't hear anything about them. We heard about the one third, which is going to be purified in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. The one third I will make, I will purify them. I will purify them like gold is purified. The purification comes when you are being tried by these times. Who, where are you today? Are you keeping these times? Have you been tried and failed? Did you fail? Yes, you failed. Did you? Yes. Did you keep the new moon? Did you? Is it a Sabbath to you? Is it? Right? You are being tried. It's either you pass or you fail. And Passover is coming. Feast of Pentecost is coming. Feast of Tabaliku is coming. Lord's Supper is coming. You're being tried. You go to the 13th. Two thirds are on the 13th Sabbath. We are on the proper date of the 14th day of the first Jewish month. That's where the Passover is, the Lord's Supper. That's where we take it. But if it is the bread and wine, in the daily, it's the daily communion service, the third hour and ninth hour. Don't confuse the two and say we are having a Lord's Supper. It's not a Lord's Supper. It is a daily. It is a communication which was being done by the priests in the Old Testament. That's where they were showing these two members of the, of the Godhead who are involved in our daily lives. You understand? Now, let's finish that chapter this year. Mm -hmm. so, so did Christ mm -hmm. plead his blood before the Father in behalf of sinners right. and present before him also with the precious fragrance of his own righteousness mm -hmm. the prayers of penitent believers. Mm -hmm. Such was the work of ministration mm -hmm. in the first apartment of the sanctuary in heaven. No, now, you, now. now you see why the devil was, was irritated by these festivals and made sure that the men of sin were alive and changed them, changed these times and laws. Why? Because these festivals, that's where the blood is, is, is dealing with the sin of men, is dealing with our infirmities. Is dealing with everything. That's where you find them on the Sabbath. You find them on the new moon. You find the blood on the on the Passover. You find the blood on the Feast of Pentecost, on the Feast of Tabernacle, on the Day of Atonement. A third hour every day. You see, you can't find it anywhere in Lord this year. There is no more third hour, no ninth hour. Unless you go where others are taking, which took from the from the day which had been changed the times. They only change the times so that you don't keep them at the third hour and they keep any time in the morning. And instead of ninth hour, they keep any time in the day. But go to Lord this year, there's nothing. We will uphold and 2,300 days, these times will be there to cleanse the sanctuary. We will be receiving the seal. These times, God still continues with them at the third hour and the ninth hour. Right? Go to the same, same paragraph. In, so, in the new covenant, let's see. Mm -hmm. So, in the new covenant, mm -hmm. the sins of the, of the repentant 
are by faith placed upon Christ and transferred, in fact, to the heavenly sanctuary. Right, that's where the sins are being transferred to. Uh-huh. A little child. A little child can mm-hmm. see that when the animal sacrifice is pointing to him, seized on earth, mm-hmm. at the death of Christ, mm-hmm. that he transferred all the sacrificial offerings to heaven mm-hmm. and is a high priest of the heavenly ceremonial law. Mm-hmm. offering his blood mm-hmm. according to the types of the earthly sanctuary pattern shown to Moses in the mount. So, what does the devil say? The devil will tell you that all those times were nailed to the cross, and some even nailed the Sabbath as well. You understand? Why are they taking all those times out? Because that's where every activity in heaven is based on. That's where all the activity in the new heaven and new earth is based on. But only those who will guard themselves, take up the cross, and maintain these times, are going to make it for the pearly gates. May God bless you when you are in the road to make sure you are making your election sure for this and salvation, sure for you to be in the kingdom and in the pearly gates of heaven. You cannot make it without all things will be paid by blood for all things. Hebrews 9 verse 22 says, all things are paid by the blood. Where is your blood? Because the blood is still there. Christ is still shedding his own blood in the way of holiness. Where is yours? Where is your daily? Where is your third hour? Where is your emblem to represent the two meditating for you and me? Let's continue, brethren. We are on the right track. Present truth will make us reach the pearly gates. May God bless you and blessed new moon, blessed 13 month of Adam.